All right, awesome. Thank you, Greg. Hey, before we jump into the questions, and there's some good ones here, uh, any any big picture thoughts? Uh, something that God spoke to you directly in this uh, time that Greg shared? Greg, when you started talking about it being important that God holds our hand, not so much that we're holding on to his, I had a little flashback. Uh, <laughs> my pastor, when I was a little kid, I think he took over pastoring our church when I was like six years old and he was the pastor until I was well into adulthood and uh, he was telling a story one time and he said there was a, a father with his young son probably I would guess the kid was five six years old going out on a winter's day and walking down the street with ice on the on the uh, pavement and the dad said, hey, you, you got to let me take your hand. And the little kid reached up and grabbed with his little hand. A couple of fingers was all he could grasp on his dad's hand. And they started walking. And sure enough, the little boy slipped and busted his butt. Dad got him up, dusted him off. And they tried it again. And sure enough, there he goes down again. And the third time he stands up and he said, dad, you might want to take my hand this time. And I'll never forget that story because it's all the difference in the world depending on my hand to hold his and depending on his big hand wrapped around mine. Mm. So that I just got a flashback from that. And Greg, I appreciate it. Uh, I've shared this verse before, but it's in uh, first Corinthians one thirty. Uh, I it's, I tried to sometimes parallel verses like, Philippians 1 6 is one of my foundation verses for my life personally. But 1 Corinthians 1 30 is also starting to be one of those that <clears throat> bonds and compares to that. This is for by his doing, hmm. you are in Christ Jesus. For he is our wisdom, our righteousness, our sanctification, our redemption. For it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Mm. And I appreciate that verse because it's all by his doing. And it coincides with Philippians 1.6. So I say amen, Greg, to all that you shared. And then I think of Psalm 73.26. says, my flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart mm. and my portion forever. Isn't that a good verse? You know, I'm reminded of an awesome verse. I'm reminded of a simple phrase, you know, I can't, but he can. And uh, Amen. sometimes that's exactly where God can use us the most is when we have that teachable spirit, that broken spirit. It, it says that God will not reject us. He'll hold, he'll, he'll hold on to us. He'll, he'll, he'll minister to us and minister through us. And, uh, and we can't, but he can. Amen. Anybody else uh, before we jump into some of these questions? Uh, need how the Word of God just ministers to our soul, isn't it? Throughout Greg's talk, I was thinking of and <clears throat> repetition, but I've, <clears throat> I've I've mentioned it before that I've been part of a men's group for forty years, and uh, the the guys, most of the guys, we we actually met a few years before that in a. Sunday school class that none of us at a church, none of us attend now. But, but the, the point is that those, that was at a time, 1980, 81, when, <clears throat> excuse me, all of us were experiencing a, a deepening of our faith. And we've started with just three, but now it's about 10 of us. And a couple guys have been in and out and, and we've, but we've, we've lived life together um, through, having kids, kids leave the nest, the kids get married, have kids of their own, their kids leave the nest. Our parents have all died. Um, one of the members died last year. And, um, but, but that group to me and others in the group, it's that fellowship and that, and that binding of together as we, as we uh, live our, live out our faith is, is all important to most of us and it's it's our faith our 
our Christian lives are totally different because of, of that group. Um, I think I, I don't know, I mean, one other thing that six of the six of the men in the group have had heart surgery. More than half of the group has had heart surgery, either a bypass or, or uh, a valve replacement. I mean, it's just it's just that kind of kind of thing. And, and our our wives too. Many of our wives have had surgery of one sort or another. But we've we've loved we've not just met for two hours a, a week on Thursday morning. We've we've lived life together and supported each other through our our families. And uh, so so this this topic is very rich for me. Larry, you can't replace those years, that 40 years. That's just such a tribute to that group and to the a faithful God. And, you know, you're right. It's more than a two hour week uh, check off the box that did that with the guys, but you've done life and you've, what an encouragement. What an encouragement. Because uh, that's what this verse is talking about. Hey, anybody else got uh, got a thought? Let me let me direct you to question five. That's the one that caught my eye. And Greg, when you were talking, I was just really encouraged by the story you shared of the of the. I guess it was your youth pastor that really that you saw at your dad's funeral, and you know you mentioned that just the influence he had. Well, Greg's question is: besides members of your family, who are you most thankful for, and what are some of the people who have had the most spiritual influence in your life? Uh, I'd be curious. Uh, what 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 uh, what strikes you when you hear that? Is there someone that stood out that made a difference, that a critical part in your life uh, that uh, stepped in? And man, you just look back and you're so thankful that the Lord intersected your path with their path, and they had the right words, they had the right actions, the right mindset, and they were able to really minister grace and peace to you. We'd love to hear a story or two about that. Well, Ron, real quick, just to be clear. Marshall um, was not uh, a, a pastor. He was not minister. He was not staff. He was a layman who just loved Jesus. And he, he loved us guys. We loved him and his family. And uh, he always had the sweetest smile on his face. I can, I can see that little bitty mustache. And, and uh, uh, he was just, uh, he had a great laugh, such a sweet rapport. And, uh, you know, one of the things he, he did is he, he spent time with us. He loved us. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know if I'll see him again, this side of heaven. Uh, I, I would love to, but yeah. And, and he was just one, he was one among numerous ones, uh, in that church. But it was when I read that this time, those are the thoughts that I went to. And so I started to kind of at least get a, a sense of what Paul was feeling himself when he wrote that. He, he, he may have been, um, he may have been writing that or dictating that with tears uh, because of the love that he had for them. So mm. just clarification. Good. Yeah, Marshall, what a, what a hero Marshall was in your life. And especially he wasn't, he wasn't paid to do that. He's just being himself. He's just yeah. ministering grace and peace. And uh, you were the recipient of that. Any, anybody got a story or two? Did you think about someone like Marshall in your life that stepped in and had great impact, great influence on you? Well, Rod, I just think of coming out of my prodigal Sundays of, uh, a guy by the name of Marvin Miller, I'd, I'd watched him. I worked at a factory down in Warrensburg, Missouri, and I, it, going into the height of my, my prodigal Sundays, I watched him leave work on a Friday night, drinking and doing all the stuff that I was doing, but he came back to work Monday praising the Lord. I grew up in church. I grew up with two-week revivals, and I, I grew up seeing people get saved and having these big moments, and then a week later, a month later, fall away, and I, I watched him come to work praising the Lord, and I just remember kind of in my spirit going, yeah, wait, well, we'll see about a month from now or a year from now or whatever. But I got laid off. I was off for a year and a half. When I came back, one of my questions was, <clears throat> wonder what Marvin's doing. Well, Marvin was still praising the Lord. And uh, Marvin made it his mission because uh, he knew I'd grown up in church. Yeah, he made it his mission to annoy me, if you will. He, he pushed my buttons. He would, he would make me laugh. 
we would laugh about stuff and give you some different things here. Marvin's black, I'm white. Marvin became Pentecostal. I was a sleepy Southern Baptist at my best when I went to church. There's, there's some pretty interesting dichotomies here, if you will. But over the span of a year or so, he would, he would pick on me. We would laugh. He'd piss me off. He'd do all kinds of stuff. But it's Marvin's fault that I'm here today. I'll just, just tell you that. And, and uh, I blame him for every bit of it. And you probably would too. I'll give you his phone number. But I, I look back on him. My mom and dad raised me right, but Marvin was the guy that that uh, when I needed somebody to, uh, you know, shoot straight with me, but 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 bring me under his wing, so to speak. Marvin was the guy that did that. And it's interesting when I pray for for different people who were in the same place that I was in all those years ago. I'll, I'll talk to them and I'll say, Lord, who is going to be so and so's Marvin Miller? Who's going to be that person that will that, that will do for them what Marvin Miller did for me? So that's, that's awesome. the guy for me. That's awesome. Holy go, Marvin. <laughs> Sounds like Marvin's still alive and kicking and doing really well and still still helping guys like you out. That's awesome. Marvin pastors a bunch. Of, he's pastored churches back around the Warrensburg area and preached to a lot of different ones. I'm not sure what denomination. I see him every so often. He doesn't return phone calls very well. But because um, I've reached out to him a variety of times. Yeah. Well, hopefully, hopefully he's getting the message that you're thankful. That's yeah. good. Hey, I, I, guys, as I think about my own story, uh, two guys from my Seattle days come to mind. Um, Denny Ryberg was, uh, was a man that believed in me. He's the one that helped kind of push me out of the nest of the comfortableness and was, uh, you know, saw some things in my life that, and was really one of my, primary reasons that he encouraged me to take to move to Kansas City and to take that job with FCA and ironically Denny after he left uh, that uh, that college pastor position in Seattle he became the president of Young Life so his influence went not just to the Seattle area but around the world with uh, overseeing that ministry before he passed away two years ago and then the other guy's a guy named George Tolls George is the one that handed off to me the Seattle Supersonics chaplain job and uh, I recently had a chance to interact with George. He, in fact, he's the guy that will be the uh, the moderator or the guy next week on the on the John Trent blessing call. He'll be the one overseeing it. George is in his uh, upper 80s. Uh, he's still just doing amazing things for Jesus. But at age 25, he said, "Right, I want you to take this chaplain job." And I look back and think, George, how in the world did you? <laughs> how did you have confidence in me to do that? That that was a big big shoes uh, to walk in and the responsibility. And, and we got a good laugh the other day, but I just said, you know, what did you see? You know, and why did you take a risk? And, you know, God had just given him a piece that I was the guy and, and uh, I was, man, it was rough. I, I look back and think, man, those guys, they, they, they probably were shaking their heads at times going, George, this is the guy you want to speak life to us 40, 40 times a year. Cause we do chapel every single game be 40 some games plus playoffs and just so neat how God used George to uh you know again push me out of the nest and you know force me to to get into God's word in a very dynamic way and and uh, begin to do li uh, life that way with some guys so it, it amazing amazing stuff and I think back Denny and George and uh, the confidence they had in me and what it did for my for my life Anybody else got a story uh, about someone God used to really, really push in a way that you didn't even know you, you were capable of doing? Rod, uh, uh, Greg, actually, both you guys, I've shared many times how, how valuable TJIW has been for, for me. Uh, all the men there, obviously, when Dan was around, the impact uh, you guys have had in my life. Uh, thinking back, even a little before that, so I came to know Christ when I was 30 years old and Rod, you kind of brought it to my mind last week. I heard uh, my, the church that uh, I settled on uh, after I came to know the Lord was the church on, on the Kansas side. There was uh, the first small group I got, I was a part of, there was a gentleman by the name of Dave Stark, mm -hmm. actually Dave, uh, I think his, he might've attended TJIW early in the day. Remember I know, Dave? I know Dave. Yep. Sure do. It, it, his wife actually worked at FCA. Yeah. Joe Lynn. Yep. Yeah. So 
Dave uh, was kind of a mentor, obviously, of mine at, at that stage. And I remember I was amazed at how much, how he could memorize scripture and just, uh, he had a really good voice. And we would, at the end of the small group, he would, you know, uh, be singing a song. And But he just really challenged me to, you know, to get started in the word and, and memorize. And um, yeah, I still see him every now and then. I'll get a, a Facebook message from him. But uh, but he and his wife definitely were were instrumental in my early stages of of, uh, of my walk with the Lord. So uh, definitely, he's somebody that comes to mind uh, in, in terms of what you're talking about today. And uh, but there's been numerous men along the way. You guys are definitely part of that. But Dave would have been one of those as well. Hey Scott, the next time you talk to Dave, please greet him for me. He, you're right. He is a special man of God and. Uh, his wife, Jolynn, is sweet, a sweet lady, too. And so what a, what a great, I, I, I guess I, if I knew about that connection, I'd forgotten about it. But yep. then you see, see Dave, make sure you connect me to that. That would be really cool. Sure. Hey, guys, I would, um, I, I know most of us on here, and some may be racking your brains right now, because that's probably what I would be doing, too, uh, trying to think of who is that that, uh, that had that kind of influence and all, but most of us are kind of like Scott said, it, it, I mean, it, it, it'll come to us. And uh, what I would encourage you to do, and I put that kind of at the end of, of uh, that question five, is I ask the question, whoever that person is, do they know that? And if they don't know that, I would encourage you, if it's possible, if they're still alive, if they're around, uh, give them a call and let them know that. I mean, you know how it feels when people, say something to you that maybe you didn't have any indication that you had been a, a help in something that they had, or you get a card in the mail, you know, which th they say that still happens. Uh, people write uh, thank you cards and stuff. You get a card in the mail or something and it just brightens your day. Uh, I would encourage you to do that because it will be good for you. And it will be very good for that, that individual. And I thought of this too, because one of our, one of our guys, and he's not on today, he'll probably be on tomorrow. Um, Austin Graham uh, and I love Austin and his wife Steph and they're like kids they're like they're my kids age and they're like other children for us and I remember when Austin became a believer and I had opportunity to, uh, to baptize him and, and uh, baptize him in Longview Lake which was pretty fun and um, just to see him grow and I spent time with him and poured into him and now it is amazing, guys. This is 10 years later, and he is pouring into so many young men's lives, students, high school students, and young men in their 20s and 30s, right along where he is. And he's having some big event even um, at, the, or they're hosting every week an in-depth Bible study and discipleship mentoring program for some of our uh, uh uh, high school students who are saying, I am all in on this. This is my life from now on. And to see that, where he was, where he is, and thinking back to people like Marshall Hunt in my life and so many other names that I can't even remember all the names of people who, who just loved on us and poured into us. I can see what he is doing is going to affect more generations. And so I would just encourage you, uh, let, let those people know. It doesn't have to be long, but just let them know how much you appreciate and how much you love them. Um, I think most of you probably got a little different uh, understanding of kind of what Paul was saying there today in that passage. That uh, uh it's right for me to feel this way about you because I hold you in my heart and I yearn for you with all the affection of Christ Jesus, man, that's just good stuff. So yeah. t tell them about it. So uh, let me add a little PS on Greg's statement. Um, I've, you veterans, you guys that have been around a long time know that historically around Thanksgiving, I have done a lesson called thanks living. And I've invited guys to not just think about thanking somebody, but actually do something and to initiate a 
a call, a text, an email to people you're thankful for. And, uh, you know, I'm the numbers guy. And I, I asked you guys uh, years ago to report back. So how many people did you contact the day before Thanksgiving, you know, and just say, hey, thank you for the investment you made in my life. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for whatever, you know, fill in the blank. And uh, we had, uh, I think, around 70 different guys in our total contacts that one year that we did this, uh, one of the years we did this, over a thousand initiated calls, emails, texts were made. And the guys talked about that for a long time, how impactful it was for them to initiate, but also the recipients of that also were incredibly blessed as well. So, so uh, do what Greg said, suggests here, you know, don't just think in your mind, reach out, let them know it will, it will not just bless them. It will bless you. Um, very, very cool exercise. So anyway, uh, something to think about, especially as we are right here in the middle of uh, the month of November and Thanksgiving is coming up quickly, might be a very timely call, timely initiated uh, contact with those people. Anybody else? Uh, one, one thing I was thinking about was I, uh, I, you know, I thought of myself as somehow I'd become an accidental influencer. And I, that's what I would call myself because I am not intentional about anything. But, but I'm amazed sometimes at the stuff God has gotten me into. Mm -hmm. And the, one of the first ones happened about, I don't know, almost 20 years ago was starting a me and, a, me and a friend of mine from Scouts had the idea to start a breakfast at our church, you know. And we, we thought if we could do a $2 breakfast, it'd probably help a lot of the older people in the neighborhood and everything. So we started out with this $2 breakfast idea. Well, that breakfast went on for like 16 years. I don't know how many thousands are, uh, of breakfast we served in the community. And you wouldn't believe how important it was for the community. We were over in the old Hickman Mills area of town, you know, and everything. Matter of fact, we, we finally had to call it quits because I wore everybody out that, that used to come help us. We got too old and uh, just couldn't do it anymore. Couldn't keep getting up and serving, you know, a couple hundred people in the morning through our through our uh, kitchen. But I'm just kind of amazed. I, I was always amazed there. I would be standing around and because, you know, I'm the crazy guy that helped start the thing. Everybody thinks that one thing, and it's in a church, they think I'm real religious, which is, again, this is the accidental influencer part. Well, I try to play the part. You know, they'd even want me to pray for them. And I'm, I don't hardly ever pray for any, you know, not in public or anything, but they come up and hug me and they want me to pray for them and everything. And I, I try to do it, but it was, it's just kind of rough for me. I'm not really that much of a person type, you know, touchy feely type person, but anyways, that, that went on. I, I remember one time standing there and just looking out at the crowd and seeing people uh, smiling, laughing at each other, seeing people they haven't seen for a long time. You know, and I thought, gosh, this has got to be a God thing, you know, and I don't know why he put me in place to start this thing and keep it running for so long. I mean, we had 30 some people that would help put this thing on every time, you know, I mean, another guy would try to coordinate the thing, but that was one thing. And then the other thing is he got me, got me into music, you know, and, and, uh, I started playing guitar and going to these jams before I know it, I'm coordinating a big jam that got bigger and bigger in our church, you know, once a week. And, and I get people thanking me and people want me to pray. Hey, can you turn in my name? Can you do this? You know, to the, to the church. And I'm like, wow, this is just so amazing. And once again, I just noticed how, what a great fellowship thing it was. And it was mostly men too, which was kind of neat, but it was women too. But, but this thing has carried on today. I mean, it's been like 20, 25 years. And now that we can't meet with COVID, we meet out in a park and we still, it's so important to people. I still get emails back saying, you know, I, I really appreciate this. You're so important that you coordinate these, coordinate these things and do these things, you know, and I'm like, wow, I just can't believe this. And again, it, it all comes back a little bit to a church, that church, you know, start and everybody thinking I'm some kind of religious leader. Then I, then they elected me uh, the men's club president, you know, in our church. So I've had to try to coordinate stuff with that. And, and we started this, somebody started this breakfast and we go to the breakfast and I'll never forget. I was at one of the breakfasts and uh, we were talking about the pastor or something. And the waitress said, oh, I thought he was the pastor. He's, she's pointing at me, you know, I'm a pastor. And she goes, you know, I'm like, I, that's why I say I, I've become an accidental influencer. I think I've been important to people. 
But believe me, I didn't raise my hand and volunteer for any of this stuff. I was just kind of following something I felt was good and something I liked. But, you know, I just kind of like God pushes me in all these different directions. And I don't even realize it's kind of a God thing till later. You know, I'm like, well, why? Why me? Why was I put in this spot? And it, it turns out to be a lot of work sometimes and everything. Even now, I've got my dang email list I got to keep up with is about 60 some people long just to invite them to the jam and stuff, you know. And I'm, uh, anyway, I just, I just thought it's comical. I don't know if anybody else has ever found themselves in that cells in that position or not, but but uh, I don't know how many times I've just stepped back and say, how did I get here? You know, what am I doing? You know, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know all these people and I can't believe they think I'm important, you know, cause I don't feel like I am, you know, I just feel like it's, it, I just got shoved into this thing. So guys, what, what Carl just described is one of the things we talk about at TGIW all the time. When you just show up, <laughs> when you just get yourself there, guess what? God, God can use anything, but you got to show up. So Carl, thanks for showing up. And, uh, and God, God has used you. It's it's not an accident. I, it's not an accident. I think God has purposely used you because you're willing, you're available, you're faithful. You're you showed up, and God said, "You know what? Now, now I'm going to help you do this." And so it's, yeah, I think I think Clay Wire because he bugged me forever to come to to TGIW. Yeah, I don't, you, I'm sure you remember Clay, but I mean <laughs> that guy was stubborn. I mean I could not shake him. No matter what. And I got involved with him through music again. He played guitar. We would jam. I'd go over to his house and jam with him sometimes. You know, I said, yeah, you really got to come out to this, this, uh, this Wednesday, Wednesday prayer, you know, uh, Bible study in the morning. And I finally reluctantly went along with him and that's changed my life too. I mean, the people I've met, you guys, the people at my table on Wednesday that I would, I would meet, you know, really influenced me a lot. And, and, uh, they've set me straight a few times, you know, and things. So, but anyways, I just thought, I just thought it was a funny, I, I, I thought, well, what am I? I thought, well, I think you could call me an accidental influencer. I guess I'm an influencer, but I sure didn't go after it or anything, you know, it just kind of came after me. Absolutely. Yeah. That's so, that's a great story. All right, good. Anybody else? Hey, uh, Johnny Dickerson, I put a little note in the chat line. Welcome. I believe this is Johnny's first time with us and don't know if you, uh, where you're calling in from, but thanks for being part today. And, uh, and uh, being being on, and uh, and with that news, I scared him, and he's gone. So, <laughs> oh, there he's back. There he's back. Anyway, anybody else today? No, hey Rod, I was just going to say, kind of like with what Carl had had mentioned uh, last week, I had sent you some photos of you talking in front of the crowd, mm. and. If anyone can make it to a Wednesday, if you would just take the time to kind of turn and look around once that room fills and you can see so many people that I've had the opportunity to like just meet and talk to. And there's so many great people in that room that, I mean, you can't help but have your heart filled with joy whenever you're when you're in that room. And I think sometimes we get so focused looking forward or paying attention to the presenter, we kind of forget about how many great people are packed in that room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those pictures were great, Chris. I mean, and it, the room was full. Uh, man, it was full last week. And uh, Chris did a great job at different angles and just putting in perspective how, how, what kind of synergy, what kind of energy is there when the guys are together. And man, we are, we're just fighting a good fight together is all we're doing, guys. We're just, we're just, you know, uh, and we're connected to the guys at our tables. We're connected to the guys in the room and God is sending us out to do a mighty, mighty work. And there's some men that are doing some amazing jobs, not because they're so great. Like, even like Carl said, not that Carl's so great, but God, the great God that works in Carl does great things. And, uh, and it's happening. It's really happening, not just in our city, but around the different metro, uh, the metro area around the nation. Um, it is really cool what God is doing. Anybody else this morning? Sure, good to have you guys, man. It's getting close to eight o'clock here. Anybody got anything before we uh, say goodbye? All right, another another great morning, Greg. Thank you for you know highlighting these three verses. Um, superb, my superb, pleasure. Superb. And uh, can't wait for tomorrow. Be with the guys there. A minute, somebody will see tomorrow, and uh, if not, we'll see you next week. Uh, God bless you.